Continuing on with our introduction of how to use the GPIO header on a Raspberry Pi, I'm going to show you in this video how to connect a simple push button to a circuit that allows an LED to turn on and off and use that button as an input. What you're going to need in addition to the LED circuit connected to your Raspberry Pi is a push button and a couple of wires to connect it to uh, your header. So let's wire this up. I'm going to connect one pin of the push button to GPIO5. And I'm going to connect the other pin to ground. And that's it for the circuit. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of programming. So here I have opened up the LED blink file that we wrote in the previous video. I'm going to save this as LED button.py to differentiate the two files. And now we can get to writing. So we're still going to have to import the GPIO. We're going to have to import time and sleep for this tutorial. We're going to set up the header strip to be recognized as the way as it is written out on the Pi itself, you know, so the GPIO 5 is actually GPIO 5. We're going to write our program so that we blink it. So we, we click the button, it turns it on, and we click the button again, and it turns the LED off. And we're going to want to cycle through this three times before we safely close down the program. We haven't clicked it yet, yet, so our count is zero. Our LED is still connected to pin 22, and our button pin is connected to GPIO 5. Just like how we set up the LED, we're going to have to set up the button. And this time, the button is not a GPIO out, but a GPIO in. And we're also going to want to specify the state that it is currently set up as. So this is an open contact, you press and it closes contact type of button. So it is going to be set up as gpio.pud underscore up, as it is currently in the up position. And to keep track of what state our button is in, I'm going to create a variable here called button press, and the button press is going to be true, which is in the up state. That's how. I keep track of it, so it's true, it's open right now, and our LED state <coughs> is currently false, that is, the LED is off right now. So we're still going to be doing the try and finally for safety reasons, but we're going to still need this count, blink count, in a while loop, but we're not going to need the contents of what our LED uh, blink file had. So erasing all of that, let's just print a statement here that says, come on man, press the button. And that way we know that it's actually doing something. And so what it's going to be waiting for is whether or not the button has actually been pressed. And so we're going to update our button press state here. And we're going to do that by typing in gpio.input. And what input are we getting? We're getting the button pin input. So once we press the button, button press will go false. So if button press goes false and the uh, LED state is also false, that is, the LED is off, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to turn the LED on. So gpio.output. Uh, LED, did I call it LED pin, is now going to become true. We can print a dummy statement that says LED on, just in case it doesn't work for whatever reason, but our program is. Uh, we're going to update our LED state to be true, so that we keep track that it's on, and then we're going to sleep for three seconds, um, so that it's not like instantaneous. The other condition is if the button is pressed and the LED state is already true, meaning the LED is on, then you can probably guess it. We're going to turn our LED pin false or off. We're going to print LED off. 
We're going to update our LED state to be false so we keep track of it. We're going to want to advance our counter. So our count was zero when we started and we've gone through one cycle now. So we're going to add one to our cycle and then we're going to sleep for half a second. Now, if I were to launch the program like this, the issue we're going to run into is if we're not pressing it, it's going to constantly be checking for presses and stuff, but it's going to eat up all the resources that the Raspberry Pi has to offer. So let's just add in a tenth of a second break here, and that way we don't kill our Pi. So let's give that a save. Let's resave this not as ledbutton.py, but ledbutton.py. And now let's give it a run. So sudo python3 led button dot pi so here it is asking us to give the button a press if we press the button the LED comes on it stays on for three seconds or rather it sleeps for three seconds it then asks for another press we give it a press LED goes off give it a press LED goes on off on I actually didn't really need a three second wait there but off and then we close the program down and if we were to do a keyboard interrupt so it's going to prime us to press the button I turn it on and I give a keyboard interrupt so keyboard interrupt we see that the LED turns off now here's something interesting if I were to execute the program again the LED comes on even though I haven't pressed the button to tell it to turn on and that's because we did the keyboard interrupt while it was in an on state so although the program closed and it cleaned up the GPIO header you can see now it's on but it's already on oh my goodness and then it's off um, although we cleaned it up it didn't for some reason reset it so we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to change our program to include that safety feature. So either when we start the program, uh, we immediately tell it to turn that GPIO pin off, or better yet, if we were to crash out of the program for whatever reason, we're going to have to um, reset things that we need to have reset. So the reason why this is important, it doesn't really matter for an LED that we're turning on or off, but let's say we were flipping a relay and that relay controls a water pump for your plants. And for whatever reason it crashes out, then you start it up again, it will turn the pump on and then wait until it turns on the pump again, which will never happen because you're constantly watering your plants or something like that. And then you flood your apartment without knowing it. So we can't have that happen. So after, before let, we do the cleanup, let's just set up in our finally statement here what we're going to want to have our final situation to be, and that will be our LED pin. We're going to want to write that to false regardless of what it was before, and then we can perform our cleanup. So if we give that a save, and we go back to our program, here, I'm just going to clean this up we go back to our program and give it a launch it launches just fine press the button the LED turns on the LED stays on if I then cancel the program with the keyboard interrupt the LED goes off and if I were to launch it again the LED stays off this time I click the button and it turns on so that's just like a fail safe safety feature that you can program into the finally section to be able to uh, get your system to shut down safely and that's important so in the next video I'm going to show you how what else you can do with the GPIO f for example switching a relay see you then